Okay. I'm gonna turn this light down. Oh, that's the setup we're going with today. I'm not tweaking it no more. So, the last one of these did pretty good. I'm glad, because I don't want to go back to Twitter badly enough to quit on doing these. So, I'm also not going to be using as loud and emphatic of a voice, because that really threw out my voice last time, and I don't have much of a voice to begin with today. So, we're going to do this at a different level of emphasis today. Got my list of tweets. Let's go. I love editing as much as the next person, uh, well, as much as I can, and uh, the problem for editing with me is I read through my draft and I write down all my little notes, and then at the end of it, I look at all the little notes of all the helpful little things that probably should be done to this manuscript, and then I realize I am the one who's got to do all of this. Do you ever read your own work in progress? and think to yourself, man, I wish the author would give this character more page time. He deserves more page time. And then it occurs to you that you wrote this. So that's your job? What is with these helicopters, man? I gotta say, I love writing characters who do things that I don't do because it pushes me outside of my comfort zone a little bit, but there is nothing like writing a character who loves to cook when I know nothing about cooking. Like, I'm... I, I'm writing this character and I'm over here like, so a chive? A, it, a, what is chive? What is a chive? What is its purpose? What does it do? Is it an onion? Is it a parsley? Is it a clam? Nobody knows. And what flavors can you combine without it being gross? I don't know this stuff. Apparently he does, but I don't. Now, I love listening to lo-fi while I'm writing because lo-fi really gets you focused and in the zone, and it's also something you can tune out really easily so that once you're focused, you're not distracted by the music. But there comes a point where you realize you're trying to type out the battle of the century. As you're trying to do that, Flowers and Decay by Zamir is playing in the background. It's it's not the mood music we need. I participate in NaNoWriMo for several reasons. I like writing. I hate waiting for Christmas. I like the Ingram discounts you get when you participate in NaNoWriMo. And most importantly, Importantly, whenever I run into any kind of challenge in life, my brain immediately turns into this conquering beast that desires to destroy all competition in its path. Are you ever just like in the middle of drafting something and you're just like... I can't wait until I can stand this book. You know, before I ever hired an editor, I was convinced that, like, my super nitpicky, like, perfectionist nature would keep me from having, like, inconsistencies and errors in, like, the, like, grammatical slash word choice section part of the book. But since hiring an editor, I have learned that if I don't have more than one character in a scene, I use the word he or she nonstop with no mention of the character's name until someone else enters the narrative. In other words, I was not correct. Also since hiring an editor, I have learned what an M dash is, which is something that I had never noticed or learned about before in my life. Um, and can I just say, how did we as a society decide that we needed more than one kind of line? It's the same line, but slightly longer. Who invented this? Who invented this? Who decided this was necessary? And will he please name his weapon of choice and meet me in the back parking lot at six? Now, I know I'm bad at writing descriptions. My descriptions are trash unless I pour an extra drop of my soul and will to live in them in order to make them better. But as a result of knowing how bad I am at writing descriptions, anytime someone genuinely compliments a description I've written and tells me that it's good, my immediate response is, they're lying because my brain when it needs to describe something doesn't give me sentences or complete thoughts it's just like yes sapphire blue i think yes the blue is quite sapphire -y. and that's it i was at a writing panel a few years ago and i distinctly remember this one guy during the q a section asked how long does it take to write a book <laughs> And at the time, I remember thinking, I don't know why you're asking, my good fellow, but I pity you. I wish this is something I was making up to sound funny, but my 11-year-old younger brother decided he wanted to make a graphic novel, which is awesome, so I was trying to help him with it, and he decided he wanted to make it about utensils that are fighting each other, and he decided to call it, I kid you not, 
civil wear. He came up with that on his own. <laughs> like, I don't know what kind of idea juice this kid is drinking, but I'll have a glass of that. I personally want to know how I can pour hours and hours of work, love, and dedication into writing one of my main characters or one of my favorite characters and they're like great and I have them well-rounded and I have a great arc set up for them and everything and then the readers latch on to a random gremlin over in the corner. Like guys, Billy Joe Bob over there took me two seconds to scroll onto the page. He shows up for three sentences. Why him? So. I don't understand random side characters sharing the backstory of the main villain. Like, at what point did the main villain go, Oh, I should sit down with someone and explain my backstory to them in excruciating detail so that no one gets it wrong. So I've been listening to Tchaikovsky while I write a lot lately, uh, just because I wanted to, and just, it's raising my IQ back up from the pit that I put it in by watching so much TikTok. So I make writing memes, as you probably know. Uh, if you don't, I'm gonna leave my Instagram down in the caption so that you can find it and you can go follow me because I always want more followers. I'm greedy like that. But I make writing memes and I ages ago learned to watermark them with my handle uh, for two reasons. One, so that if someone reposts the meme and doesn't tag me, then, you know, a savvy Instagram user can use that handle and find my account. But reason number two is so that if someone reposts one of my memes and doesn't tag me, so that I know it's my meme, uh, and I don't just look at it and go, hmm, that looks vaguely familiar. Are you ever, like, rereading your draft and you're like, but you're also like, and then finally you're just like, how did I forget the word for floor in this sentence? How did I leave the whole word floor out of it and never notice? So this is your reminder not to name your character as something that's basic and stereotyped. It's unoriginal for one thing. For another thing, um, you don't do it because once I did that and I named my character like Diego or something basic like that, but I couldn't remember for the entire book whether his name was like Diego or Juan or like Claudio or something like that, so uh, he kept switching names the entire book because I couldn't remember what his name was. So don't do that. Final reminder for the day. I want you to think of the worst book you've ever read with the crappiest writing and like the plot was the worst and you didn't understand a word of it and like the characters you hated all of them just think about it focus on it picture it in your mind's eye and now think about your book does that thinking about that other book not make your chances look much better because <laughs> it makes me feel better all right that is it that's all the tweets i will see you next time subscribe to my channel you know you want to Thank you.